Hello everybody and welcome back to Angie B Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me. So today I am going to play with this fabulous new stencil. It's from JMC Designs um, and released on the 17th of May and I haven't used it at all, hence it's clean. So this is my very first outing with it and I just think it's brilliant. It just made me smile when I saw it. It's obviously a beehive with some buzzy bees going around and a little bit of buzzy bee tail things and flowers going on. So what I thought I would do for my first use was actually use it with some polyfiller because I'm a big fan of the polyfiller. So I'm even going to stick this down because I want it to remain still as I'm working with it. To stick it down I'm just using a roll of low tack tape. Um, I actually can't remember the, the make of this one. It's the one that I use all the time um, which is why I can't remember the name because I I don't need to. I've all, I've just I bought a load years ago and I'm still using them up. Um, I think that's possibly my second ever roll of low tack tape. I don't use it very often. So I'm using a tub of polyfiller multipurpose. If you've seen any of my other videos, you may well have seen this. I've used it quite a lot just recently. I love it, and it's a really good way to cheaply do stenciling. It's quite boingy. What I have found is it's got a little bit more flexibility than artists um, paste. So it's it once it's dry, it doesn't crack off as easily because it's obviously it's designed to be used on wood and things. Now I'm gonna swap my palette knife for a metal one because I don't like how that one's reacting. There we go. And we'll just pop this on. So as I say, this is my first outing with this. Um, I just think, I mean, Julie is an amazing designer. I've thought that for a long time. I'm now on the design team, but even before I was on the design team, I used to love seeing her stuff and she knows how much I love stencils. So she lets me get her stencils and play with her stencils, which I'm very happy about. I think stencils and the gel plate are becoming my favourite things and I will be using the other stencils from this set on the gel plate as well as this one obviously um, because I just love the effect of stencils on a gel plate I just think it's brilliant and I've decided that if the name hadn't already gone to the amazing stencil girl company I would be calling myself stencil girl because I love it I do love it. But, ah oh well, the name's already in use. Right, so that's my layer of polyfiller down. I'm just scraping off the excess back into the tub. And I'm going to pop a little cover over and then pop the lid back on. Okay. Now what I would say is make sure your lid's firmly on with any medium that you're using because if you don't then they dry out and you end up not being able to use them. Let's see how this looks. Oh, that's come out so well. I love it. I know I always say I love it but I do love it. What I really like as well about Julia's stencils is that they're quite thick so you actually get, I don't know if you're able to see, but you get quite a good return. So quite a good depth to them, which is just brilliant because it means you get a lot more texture in them. So even before I've dried this, I'm going to spray it. I've decided to go with Distress Oxides and I've picked up yellow, obviously, so I've got mustard seed. And I've also picked up spiced marmalade because it's got, if you look at it before I shake it, the base, the, the um, powdered part of it is a yellowy colour and then the rest of it's an orangey colour so it's kind of got that yellow in it. So I'm giving both of these a shake. I have also picked up quite an old spray that I've got which is a Mr Huey's. Uh, Mr Huey's Colour Mist. I've had these for many many years. Um, I couldn't even tell you how many years and I don't see them around anymore to be honest I don't even know if they're still in business I've no idea so I'm gonna pop this on oh look at that 
colour. Now I've done it on black because I just think that you get the black of the black and yellow of a bumblebee but also you get that vibrancy popping. So I'm going to pop on another colour straight over the top and I'm just going to do that down one side and I kind of want it just on the um, the beehive, that's the word I was looking for. So I'm going to get something that I can use to cover. Right, I've got a little postcard here. I'm just going to pop here to cover that so we don't get... Okay, so we've got a little bit. I'm not being really fussy, but I wanted most of it to be just on the beehive. Okay. Now I am going to use the heat gun, dry this off a little bit and then see where we're at. Well here it is now that it's been dried off. Now you can see, I'm hoping that you can see on the camera, because I used a smaller um, knife than the size of the stencil, we've got lots of wonderful drag marks and I intentionally don't worry about them. Unless you're going to do something like a screen printing style where you actually run the whole length of something that's got big pieces like this, you're going to end up with these little areas. But for me, it just adds texture, particularly for something like this, where you would naturally have texture on the outside of a beehive. It's not going to be smooth. So I absolutely love it. And I love that just the something as simple as two separate colours going on and we've now got this shading so we've got it's almost like the sun's coming in from this side this side still in the shade um, and it's something to just give you a little bit more dimension to what you're working on so what do we want to do next now I did say that I had the Mr Huey yellow and I'm thinking that I might want to put it just kind of round here you'll notice with the the, the oxide distress oxide sprays you get a chalky finish which kind of rubs off a little bit um, and don't worry about that it's that's just the the way of the ink um, if you want to make something more permanent because you're wanting to use it as a piece of art or you're wanting it not to shed when it's up on someone's mantelpiece or something you can always spray it if you're making a card or something personally I just leave it as is and accept the fact that you're going to get that different um, texture and that different look but you're also going to get the, the slight dustiness coming off it's almost a bit like plaster dust right I'm just going to give this a spray on a spare piece of paper due to the fact I don't know when I last used it and I don't want to ruin what we've already done oh that works fabulous right so you know what I don't think I want to use it in its purest form as in a spray. What I'm going to do is use my Mr Huey as a paint. So I'm just going to pop it down like this and then get a paintbrush. So my paintbrushes as ever are sitting in water getting ruined but they still work at the minute so I'm not going to stress. And I'm just going to add some other highlights in. So just something a little bit darker coming down each of these door slats. So again, we're just adding depth. Don't know why I didn't start on the first one. Very bizarre. But this will dry in to the uh, polyfiller. The other thing to bear in mind is you're going over something which is water reactive and obviously there's water in ink sprays so you're going to get a reaction from that. I'm really liking the way this is kind of leaching across. It just makes it look more organic. You see here where it's actually, it's not just a straight run down. It's kind of leaching across. I like that a lot. It's just giving us a little bit more depth to what we're working on. And coming down the side of here. Do, 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 do not being overly precious about where it is it's just for an illusion of more depth so I'm also going to add some of this down here a little bit thicker 
because what this is also going to do because it isn't an oxide it's going to kind of work with the oxide but not necessarily keep the same level of uh, chalkiness so you're getting more texture in there we go and I also want to make those bumblebees pop a little bit so if you want to you can be really careful and go in with your um, your stencil afterwards and colour them up that way but for me uh, I think I'm just going to give this a go like I said I don't know if any of this is going to work because it's the first time I've used them hey ho I actually really really like this I want to add, I think, a little bit of water down here just to make it a little bit less distinct as a line. Almost soften it up a little bit, just along here. So let's get my water. I'm just going to squirt a little bit out onto my mat. I've got some ink, I'm not bothered rinsing it. I'm just going to add some coming down. There we go. Yeah, that's it. That's better. Soften it up a little bit. So we're starting to get a real good mix there of the different types of ink. So I'm going to give this a quick blast and when it's dry we'll come back and put in the next layer. I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking that there's too much of a, an obvious differentiation here and on here and it's not the look I'm going for so I'm actually just going to use my water bottle and hope that this works I'm just going to spray the whole thing and see if it just softens up those lines a little bit um, because obviously the inks are water reactive um, and your distressing your distress oxides are going to give you a different look as soon as you put water on them because it splits out the color so again it's going to give us more texture even if it doesn't remove that line completely it's going to give us more texture so let's see what we end up with. I mean I like it like that but unfortunately when you dry it that goes it becomes chalky again but I do like it. I just want a little bit more on that door. There we go. Right so I'm going to give this a quick blast, um, dry it off and then we'll move on to the next stage. So I think that that has now softened this line up. It just looks more like a shadow which is just what I was after. So now I need to decide I want to highlight this I want to do something with the antenna. I also want to highlight these little dots, but also the flowers. I want to paint the flowers. I'm thinking I'll paint them individually. And I'm just trying to decide what to use. I'm thinking my Ecoline pens might be a good place to start. So I'm going to do that terribly criminal thing and I'm actually going to mop up my ink. I do hate doing but a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do right so ecoline pen pens if you haven't seen them before um, this is my collection this is two different sets I've got a grey set and a, I think it's just a primary set or a colour set um, I do like them I'm fairly new to them I've probably only had these a couple of months but I like what they do. You can use them as pens, obviously, as a brush pen. So if you're into your brush lettering or anything like that, these are brilliant. I'm useless at brush lettering. I've given it a try a few times and failed abysmally. So I don't do that. Um, but what I do do and what I like about them is the fact that you can use them as watercolours. But you can, get, you can vary the intensity just by putting down more or less of the colour. So I want to use the mustard because obviously we've got yellows and oranges going on. Oops, come back. I want to use the orange. I'm really drawn to the pink because I think the pink is going to make things stand out on here. So I'm thinking the pink on the flowers and I think we should go with potentially the bright yellow on the flowers. And I actually want to use, this one is um, deep gray and it's, you've got your black as well. I think I might have two black ones actually. Yeah, I've got two black ones because you get one in each set. But your deep grey is just that little bit softer. 
which is I do quite like it and then if I want to add a little bit more intensity I can come back and add the black so I always make sure I have some water so I've got my water next to me and some brushes and a raggy there's always a raggy nearby right just make sure I've got a flat area on my mat so I'm going to use my mat as if it's a palette and I'm going to start off with the pink and I've kind of in my head got the pink oh, the other thing these are really good with is if you have water brushes these work brilliantly with water brushes I want to have a little pink doorknob so I've laid down a watercolor layer so that's just the ink with water on it but then we know that this side is darker so I'm going to go straight on and just stipple part of it so we're getting that more intense colour which is again giving us the depth okay I'm going to go in with the grey for the antenna I'm going to go straight on I'm purposely not even trying to go on the edges um, down the sides where the yellow is that we've sprayed on because I want it to stand out, it almost acts as a, a highlight around it, although we're starting to lose that aren't we? Mm, we might have to add some more yellow in around that, we might do a different colour for the other set of antennas, see if that makes a difference. Let's give it a go. Oh yes, I like it in the yellow, in the yellow, in the orange. Doo -doo -doo. It's quite a nice shade of orange, isn't it? It's reacting really nicely with the yellow that's underneath. Oh, I think I prefer that. So this one's going to come out darker because obviously we've already put the grey down. But there's nothing to stop us adding this on top. It's not going to come out the same colour because it's going on to grey. But it's just going to highlight it a little bit more. Oh, I'm happier with that. Now what you'll find with these is you might pick up some bits of colour because I've just gone over it but you'll see as soon as I've done that a few times the first couple had grey at the nib and now it's completely clean. So you can just run them away to clean them off which is useful to know. Okay right let's go for the flowers. I'm thinking for the centre of the flower. You see I don't really want to go with the same colours. Hmm, I quite like the idea of having pink on the flowers. Right, I'm going to put pink down but I might add in some purple as well. So I'm literally just using the sheet like a palette. I'm just adding in the colour. I'm not being careful because me and careful just don't really know each other to be honest. It's a word I've heard of but when it comes to creating I haven't got a clue because I like to just get things done so I can now start adding intensity by going back picking up more and adding it in but the other thing to bear in mind is these are water reactive so if you go in and you do it and you go actually I don't like it you can't remove it as such but you can alter it by adding either another colour like we did here or by adding water but this is going on top of the oxide which is also water reactive so don't be surprised that there's a, a difference there as well you're not getting a true pink colour each time I'm going back in with the brush I've purposely not put it over the same bit because this has picked up some of the oxide so if I put that on my brush if I put the, the pen into it sorry I'm going to end up with oxide on my brush nib which I don't want Particularly, although having said that I did go in direct onto the oxide down here that's my well looked after paintbrush with all the paint flaking off it I don't know what it is about this paintbrush that I love I don't even know where I got it from but I just love it love 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 it Doo -doo -doo. right I am actually going to be brave and go in and hope that it doesn't damage a brush pen 
So these have got a period of time whereby you can play with them once you put them down but then they do dry so it's not unlimited but you do have a period of time there there we go we're getting a bit more depth to our flowers which is what we want now if you look at some people like Louise Sim does um, the eco lines on the craft store and she does amazing things with them um, she's very much into doodling and does lots of doodle demos with them and stuff which is really cool it's just not something that I particularly do I do do doodles but it tends to be if I'm bored waiting for someone or something it doesn't tend to be in my creativity as much I do do some zentangling which is doodling but not as much as I used to Right, add a bit of colour down here as well. I'm purposely not doing them all at once. I have on this because it's a smaller area, but as as it dries, it becomes less movable, and I don't want to end up not being able to move it and just end up with a dirty big line. So I'm just doing a bit at a time. Oh, I'm liking the way that's beginning to look. Now I do know it needs a little bit of sparkle on it, so I will be putting some sparkle on it at some point not there yet right I've come back with a couple of things I've come back with eyes ink texture paste the beads one and I'm going to color it up and then apply it but I think I'm going to color it up with the pink of this but I've also picked up my um, violet oil paint and I'm thinking that with a very small bachelory thing is going to work really well at standing out in the middle of here as well as adding texture oh that's doing it that's doing it I'm actually thinking I'll put way too much on that one thing you have to remember if you're using oil paint is it takes ages to dry so I can't now put anything else on the top of that um, until it's dry but that's fine right I'm going to use my pointy tool pokey tool pointy tool my pokey tool just to spread this out a little bit and get it right to the edges and also to add a bit of texture to that one. Oh, I think that vibrancy just really stands out. Hmm. I wonder if oil paints um these would mix. Ah, right, let's try it. Let's try it. We'll go with bit of blue. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of blue on my mat. Again oil paints here. We only need a tiny tiny titchy titchy bit. That's fine. Slightly more than I need but that's what blobbed out of the bottle. Let's mix it. Oh I mean that looks gorgeous already even if you don't do anything with it. It's beautiful. So because this is in a white, the beads are in a white base, it's going to take your oil paint paler or whatever you add it to, it's going to pale it down because it's mixing it with, it's going to give you a tonal effect because you're mixing it with white. Right, pop this, oh don't, yeah, let's get another, actually it's useful to have a whole range of different ways of adding to your work whether it be spatulas, pokey tools, your fingers, whatever. I'm thinking I might end up doing my fingers for this one, but we'll see. We shall see. So we shall. So again, we're getting the texture from the texture paste, but also from the oil paint. 
Um, we've already put texture down because we've used the um, polyfiller. I've just realised I'm off camera. Apologies for that. Let's add a bit more to this top one. So I've noticed as well what's happening. Ooh, that one went a bit wrong. Is that this is actually turning green, which is interesting. Now, there is a very logical reason for that, and I can tell you exactly what it is because it's going on top of yellow because we've sprayed yellow on, and the yellow is reactive to water, which obviously there is water both in the acrylic that is the base for the beads, but there's also a liquid which I'm assuming there is a, a water content to in the oil. I don't know the constitution of oil paints, but I'm going to make that assumption that there's something with oil in there, with water in there. So we're getting a little bit of a reaction, but I'm liking the texture that we're getting. I'm going to really build this up. This is going to take quite a few days to dry before it can be actually touched because of the oil paint, but I'm actually really liking how it's going. I don't actually want to go over that one because the green's coming through so nicely. Add a bit more onto this one. And onto that one. So you can see we've got some tiny little beads coming through. Which once everything settles down you'll be more will be more noticeable. But I like how they look. Right. Just gonna get rid of this. I don't tend to put this on my raggy. Um, as much because it just gets messy because it doesn't dry off I then ruin other pieces of work with it so I'll just use a bit of loo roll because that's what I had to hand but it absorbs it up nicely right that's that cleared up so we've now got some little bits of colour, so you can see this one particularly we're getting a little bit of green going on. I'm wondering if I can get away, there's a little bit that's just gone off the side here. I just want to see if I can lift it off any, no that's just spreading it out. Apparently we're having a little bit of blue off the side on that one, which is fine. So the other things that I want to do is to add a little bit of um, shimmer to it and I think to do that I'm going to use see I want to use some I want to add some um, crackling to it as well just because crackle paste is fab on everything now I believe I have some I'm looking for my white where's my white that's my white white crackle and we also have some paints that are kind of rusty colours so I think they're going to come in so we've got a, a rust paint and a latte paint which I think I'm not sure about the latte but I think the rust will be good but first of all I'm going to use my white crackle I'm going for white the, these crackle paste they're from Pretty Gets Grit It, the great. I've got every colour. I love them. And I'm going to be quite liberal with applying this across here. Now the thing about this is it's taking on the colour. Again, you've got to bear in mind what's on, what we're applying it to is reactive to water. But also what's happening, I'm purposely going in with a different spatula so as I don't contaminate my jar too much. But what's also happen happens is the colour will be more intense in the cracks when the cracks form. So I'm going to put this on now and then I'm just going to leave this to do its magic and let the oil paint dry as well. Now probably before the oil paint dries I'll come back and add the other bits on. I've just realised I stuck that in with a lot of yellow on. Oops. This is why nothing of mine ever stays clean. So you can see in there I've now got some yellow. Let's see if I can pick it out. Yeah, I think I got it. So with this crackle, 
the thicker you put it on, the bigger the cracks. The thinner you put it on, the smaller the cracks. So if you want big cracks, put it on thick. And it's a one step as well. Now I know there are other one steps on the market. This is the only one I use because it's the only one I've ever used. Um, I never really was into Crackle until these came on the market and I'm now a little bit in love with Crackle. Oh, I'm liking that. Now I can't bring myself to get rid of this because it's Crackle. So I'm going to find a journal. I have a page in this journal which has so many mop-ups. Oh, in fact, I quite like this page as a mop-up page for this. So I'm literally just going to spread it onto my journal page. Clean off my spatula. This one's got the yellow on, so we're going to get a different look. We're going to get some greens going on. This is going on to... What's this going on to? Uh, that looks like it could be Dina Wakely Shimmer Paints, I believe. Um, so that's quite a nice background. So I'll leave that one to dry as well. So here's where we're up to for now. I'll come back to you when this is dried off um, and we'll move it forward again. Right, well here is the beehive which is now all dried. The oil paints have dried off which is what we were waiting for. Now I got a little bit overexcited and completely forgot I'd started doing this on camera so I've actually already added some touches in. So I'll tell you what I've done and then I'm just going to put this onto a background ready to go on the front of a card. So you will see here we now have a little bit of shimmer on the doorknob and a little bit of shimmer on the petals. I'm not sure if that's coming up on the camera. There you go. There's a hint of a shimmer there. And we also have a hint of a shimmer on the antenna. So for doing that for the doorknob and for the flowers, I used this um, metallic gilding polish, which is from Cosmic Shimmer. It's really, it's quite, well, it's lovely, this stuff, actually. The colour of it is stunning. Um, but it's, it's quite squishy. It's kind of spongy. But it produces this beautiful shimmer. I love the colour of this. And the thing that I like about this as well, if you're doing a big area, it comes with a sponge in the lid. I don't have any other products that come with the sponge already in there. So I do like that about it. So if I'm covering a big area, I will use the sponge. So I've used that here and just by the center of the flowers. And then I've used my Pebeo Gilding Wax, which if you've seen a few of my videos, you'll notice that I use this a lot. And this is just, the best thing about this, to be honest, is actually the smell. It smells gorgeous it smells like a really high class polish <laughs> it's fab I love it so I just used a tiny little bit of that just on each of the um, antenna but what I found was if you remember back to the original video I started off by putting a grey on this ant these antenna and then decided I didn't like it so I went over it with the orange so we had a bit of brown look going on here here I just went over with the orange so it was an orange base and here I'd completely forgotten there was a third B so I actually went straight over with the gilding wax onto the yellowy bit similar to the tails so there's three different looks on the antenna but I actually quite like that and the other thing that I've done is used my stays on ink pad and just added some little bits of black around the edges just to define the edges of the piece so what I thought I would do is show you how different the different colours you mount on can make a piece. One thing to consider when you're mounting a piece is what do you want to highlight. So I've picked up three pieces of card. I've got a true yellow, an orangey yellow or possibly towards a pale orange and then quite a vibrant orange. So I'm going to show you each one. I know which one I like the best but I'm going to show you each one before I let you know which one I'm going to use. And I'm just going to pop them on the corner. If we imagine this is our card blank, if we pop this on the corner here, that is going to highlight this paler yellow. So the colour behind focuses your eye in on the same colour on what you're looking at. So it's highlighting this area. So you kind of focus more in on that area because you've been told to by this yellow surrounding it. 
So if I now swap that for the orangey yellow or the yellowy orange, whichever way you want to look at it, and pop that underneath. So you can see there, that is actually bringing your eye to a different area. It's kind of bringing it more to this middle area and a little bit more out to these edges where, oh, that's something I've not mentioned to you. Look, I forgot to say to you, look at how that crackle glaze has turned out. I forgot you'd not seen that. It has got, because we put it on really thick, we've got some fabulous thick cracks on there, which I think are amazing. Anyway, so you can see here the colour coming through on the crackle glaze as it's mixed with the oxide underneath and with the um, Mr. Huey ink at the side. But we're getting, it's kind of focusing in on the, again, still the slightly paler areas. And then if we put the vibrant orange underneath, this is, I'll just turn that, that corner's a bit bent. To me, this is the one that sets it off because this pulls your eye to the whole hive. It's pulling your eye in all down this side, across the door, even this little bit here, but it's also bringing your eye to the fact you've got three bees. Now, if you want to, you could put pink behind it and that would highlight the flowers and the doorknob, or you could put blue behind it and that would highlight the dots. In fact, let's try that. So if I now swap this for pink, let's see what shows up the most. And you can immediately see you are drawn to the doorknob and to the flowers. So the colour you put behind, you need to think really hard about it because it's going to impact what your eye is drawn to in your piece. Let's swap that over for the blue. We'll pop the blue in there. And that makes it all look a bit dull because your focal point is onto here. I don't think that looks right. We'll bring that orange back in and pop that on. To me, that just makes it pop. What you can do is start to bring in different layers of colour, like this. Personally, I don't like too many layers, but there's nothing to stop you having all three. So it's actually bringing your eye in a little bit more or just have two of them. So if we take away the pink, I think just the two of them there actually looks quite nice. I might go with that one. Let me try it just with the white. You know, I'm going to stick with the orange. I just really like how that looks. So what I'm going to do is stick this down and then I'm going to show you what I use to um, trim down my edges. So here we have the beehive stuck on to the piece of card that I chose. And I've got my perfect layers. If you haven't seen these, I've had these for ages and I actually had to just Google who makes them and it's perfect paper crafting that made them. I think they're an American firm. Um, I got them early on in my crafting career off Create and Craft. It was before Hochanda existed. It's They've been around for a long time. There are other, I think We Are Memory Keepers does something similar as well. But I use these quite a lot of the time because it's a really easy way of making sure all your sides when you're cutting something out, if it's, a, if it's got straight edges, you can make sure it's the same all the way around. So on each of them, you get a series of numbers and they're in inches. I'll just move that over onto there, there we go. So when the number is facing you and is correctly legible, that's the quarter of an inch is here and the three eighths of an inch is here the five eighths of an inch, I need to turn it over to get that. There's the five eighths of an inch and there's the one eighth of an inch here. Sorry, there's the five eighths, there's the one eighth. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how they work. I've stuck this in quite a way in. You get a whole range of different sizes on them. But I've stuck this quite a way in and I think I'm going to go for three eighths of an inch. So what you do is you have on here a ledge, can you see that little ledge here? Let me see if I can get that in focus. So there's a little ledge here and that is what catches your paper. So you need to have stuck your thing down first. I want three eighths of an inch, so I need to be able to read the three the right way around. 
and then you pop it onto your work and you get the edge to just butt up so I'm pushing that and it's not going anywhere it's butted up to the edge of this paper and then you just hold it down and cut okay so that is now a 3 8 of an inch gap I don't know if they do a metric version I'm really not sure but you can figure out how big you want your gap to be your edge to be just looking at them and then you just continue around your piece I'm going to do the bottom bit next so that this is a little bit uh, more useful so it's got a bit more length to it so you, normally I would be a lot more careful as to where I stuck my piece on this is just to demonstrate to you that it doesn't matter if it's wonky or anything you can straighten it up using this it's a rather clever bit of kit so here we now have our beehive with a perfect 3 8 of an inch frame on it brilliant so so easy I love these and they're, mine are getting pretty battered now they're getting a little bit tired looking they've got beginnings of scratches and cracks and things but like I said I've had them for donkey's years and they're brilliant and then you can keep adding so if I want to in fact I will show you if we add another layer onto this so you can keep getting all your layers added I'm just using double sided tape this down and again I've said before if you're wanting to take double sided tape off just make sure you burnish so press extra hard on the corner and it comes off really easily if I try and do it from this side there's a chance so you can see that I'm lifting the tape as soon as you burnish it down first it comes off it's a really really simple way of making sure that it comes off every time you can see this side it's not even stuck down yet but this corner is so I could lift it okay and I'm going to grab a piece of black and my black cardstock I tend to use an awful lot of so I tend to find I've got little pieces of it floating around right so again I'm going to show you exactly how you can use this so again this time I'm going to stick it at an angle so you can really see how good it is at getting it accurate I'm going to go for one eighth of an inch so if we look at this I'll bring this orange in because it shows up better so if we look here the one eighth the one is actually the wrong way around so they've purposely not just put a straight line they've put the little top so that you can tell that's back to front there it is the right way around there it is back to front so you can tell which one it is you want you want the one to be the wrong way the right way around so you flip it over now that one's the right way around that one's the wrong way around and the four's the wrong way around so you know that's the one that's this side which is an eighth of an inch let's do it so I'm going to start with the edge that's got the least amount of space on it you can do exactly the same you just put it down and then push up you'll find because I've got texture here it's at an angle that doesn't matter it doesn't affect it at all you just need to make sure that you've got a firm grip and you cut it I love them I think it's just such a clever thing to do if I remember rightly yeah they have you can see it these have got steel ruled edges so because of that you're never going to cut into the plastic because they've got steel inside them it's so clever and you just don't see them advertised anywhere anymore. I have just done, a, like I said, did a Google to find out who made them. And you can get them on that there Amazon. Now this is really thin card that I'm butting it up to this time compared to the, the black card of the original image. So it's just needing a little bit of downward pressure to catch. And if you find it's not catching all the way along, just back it up and put the downward pressure on again if you're doing thicker card with your scalpel you just need to make sure you do more than one pull so you want it to stay perfectly still I just use, I don't know why I use a scalpel, I prefer scalpels to craft knives they just seem to work better for me right so let's see if we can get this last one it's been a bit of a slippery customer there we go
there we have it so you can see now we've got a really nice frame on that so one more thing to mount it onto will be a plain 8x8 card so we flip that over we then have a lovely card topper so there you have it this is what you can do the very first time I used that stencil and this is what I've ended up with and I think that looks rather nice and if you want to you can add a sentiment to that it could be a new home card which is perfect for a beehive it can be a birthday card it can be a hope to see you soon card or whatever you want card you just choose your own sentiment but I think as a focal image on a card that is a lovely lovely stencil anyway thank you for watching um, I hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you here again. Bye for now.